friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy Ernest and I am a long arm quilter and here on my channel I like to share client finishes as well as my own personal projects. Today is actually Wednesday, uh, January 25th. I'm filming a day late this week. Um, I think I mentioned last week that uh, we had friends from Minnesota coming in and they were here with us um, from last Wednesday all the way through this um, past Monday. So we had a wonderful time. Um, it was five um, adults. Well, the youngest was 12, but they were four siblings, um, three of them brothers, and then a sister. And then the sister had her husband and little baby with them. So we had six extra people in the house for the week and in a uh, 1600 square foot house with one bathroom, it was quite the adventure. But we had a wonderful time, really, really good time. And I'll insert a few pictures of some of the activities that we did uh, while they were here for you to see. So just a wonderful time, uh, the most pleasant family, the most polite children I have ever, ever been around, and um, just a very pleasant um, visit with them. And I just want to um, encourage you, if you watch the news a lot and uh, you kind of get discouraged seeing the youth of today, and, and I know we've all uh, made those complaints at times, what's the youth of today coming to? and um, it all is not lost. There are some great kids out there and we had the pleasure of uh, spending the entire weekend with them with some of those uh, this past weekend. So it was made for a very busy weekend. I did get uh, some quilting done um, but then yesterday, um, I usually film on Tuesdays, but yesterday I had some errands to run. They were predicting this um, big snowstorm for today. So I thought I'll get all my errands done yesterday. I had a dentist appointment and different things like that. Got all that done yesterday and knowing that we would probably be in today and um, I don't think they got quite the snow that they anticipated. First it was six to nine then it dropped it back to five to eight. And um, at the highest we might've had an inch, honestly. And actually now it's, um, it's dripping outside and I can see the bare ground. So it wasn't the snowstorm that they anticipated, at least not for us, I'm really not sure. Um, those in other areas away from us how much they got. I'm sure somebody got the snow, but it just didn't land here. Um, but that caused um, uh, two of my children to be called off of work today and my husband stayed home. He was a, He's able to work from home, so he was at home. So I have the whole crew in the house today, but we're gonna film anyway, because this was my plan for today. So I have lots of fun things to share today. I'm gonna start out with uh, some happy mail. This is actually a text I received from a client. I had recently worked on a t-shirt quilt um, for them and uh, from a family member who had passed away. And so this was a very special quilt to them and I received a text message from them this week that just made, uh, made my day, honestly. And I just thought I would share it with you. Um, it says, I wanted to thank you so much for the beautiful quilt. It was more than I had imagined it would be and has started a small amount of healing that we haven't been able to achieve in the last year and a half. Thank you for preserving these memories and giving a tangible healing nudge. Your work, your work means more than you will ever know. And that is why I long arm quilt. Um, there are people out there that have many other talents than I do, um, and they work in their areas. I'm able to do the quilting. And I love to be able to preserve memories for others and uh, in a tangible, as she mentioned, in a tangible way that um, they can hold and cherish and uh, begin healing from that. And so that, that's, that's why I do what I do. And I hope that's why you do what you do, um, just to be a blessing to other people. I also mentioned last week that uh, for my birthday I was going to get to go shopping with my oldest daughter. She got married last summer and has moved about an hour away from us. So I traveled over to her house um, last Wednesday morning and was able to find a quilt store. We went to a small quilt store called Everyday Quilting Company and this is in um, Urbana, Illinois. So just across the state line um, from where we are, about an hour and a half, I would say, almost two hours, a little suburb of um, Champaign, Illinois. 
I found a great little quilt store there tucked away inside of a, a strip mall, but once we got in there, uh, we found lots of cute fabric. So I wanted to share some of the things that I picked up. Um, first of all, I have been raving about this, and I, I looked up how to pronounce it, Zen Chic, Zen Chic, Chic, Zen Chic. Um, and I found a couple of these, uh, these are just pre-cuts, charm packs here. Um, this one is in the line Celestial. I am just um, loving her fabrics. I uh, Back in one of my very first um, YouTube videos, I shared a quilt that I had um, long arm quilted for someone that used some of this fabric. And I just, I love it. I think it's, um, okay, well, first of all, let me show you what I, what I love. I love anything that has newsprint, has words, um, that's what draws me to it. I, I love that. Look at this one. Like an old um, date stamp type thing. I just, I love that. And I think she has done a very nice job of combining modern, a kind of a modern look, modern colors, um, with the, uh, the vintage feel of of old words and advertisements. I, I just love that. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with these yet. I picked up this one and I picked up another one. This one is um, Modern Backgrounds. It says even more paper. This is just right up my alley. So again, um, you can just see the old word print, the old advertisement. That I just love that. I just love it. And um, I love words. So this one, is, it's a background, so it's a, a low volume, just a very light hint of the gray onto the cream with the words and things. So I just picked up a couple of these packs of, of charm packs. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I didn't wanna forget is why I got them. I didn't wanna forget her lines of fabric out there. So um, these are gonna sit on my shelf and I'm gonna enjoy them even before I do any, any quilting with them. So I picked up those two. <clears throat> those two packs. Another thing I picked up is um, some Best Press. Do you use Best Press at all? So this is the bottle that I had, and this is in uh, Lavender Fields. I love the smell of this. This is a uh, starch and sizing, and I needed some more. My bottle is out. So when I was at that quilt store, I asked if they had any. They have a refill bottle. This is actually unscented, which is not my favorite, but I was out, so I, I picked up some, so I'll refill my bottle here. But what I use the Best Press for most often, what I use this for is if I am loading a um, backing onto the long arm and it has some wrinkles, it's been sitting, you know, whenever the client sent it to me or brought it to me, it was folded up in a bag, it's been sitting for a couple of weeks before I get to that project. And um, so when I am loading it on the long arm, I will um, spritz some of this best press onto the backing as I'm rolling it on the bar. And then as I'm rolling it up, it's straightening it out, it's, it's, um, getting rid of all those wrinkles and so i like i like that i like that it's in the lavender um that's i i enjoy that smell it was it's a very pleasant pretty <laughs> smell when you're working in your sewing room so um at some point i'll get some i know they have a lot of other scents and i uh, plan on using those as well i will link some of these in the, in the description box if you're interested um, but i do enjoy that when i'm using uh, or loading quilts on the the backings on the long arm. So that's one of the things I picked up because I was out. They also had a clearance table while we were there and I picked up the cutest fabric. This is by Deb Strain. The line is called Cultivate Kindness and it's just, it's an aqua print with um, the vintage trucks. I just love these vintage trucks and they're usually flowers or vegetables in all of them. Now, the reason I picked this up is because I already um, had bought this panel. I'd, I probably picked this up a year ago, a year and a half ago. And it's the same line. So here's a panel and it has these um, one, two, it has two, four, six of those squares like that. And then it has a, a wide one across the top, Cultivate Kindness, that's the name of the line. But you can see that the aqua print that I bought matches that aqua truck right there. And so I knowing that I had this panel at home, I went ahead and bought that fabric since it was on clearance. I may just use it as the backing for this. Um, I had picked up a pattern 
that I was going to use these uh, these truck squares for. Let me show you that one. This one is, I picked this up along, at the same time that I bought the panel. I picked up this quilt pattern called Twinkling Stars. This is by Megan Poehler McGuire. And if you can see those little um, squares, the truck squares, now this is a different line. These are more um, American Farmhouse, Land That I Love, America the Beautiful, Grow in the USA, so more patriotic. Um, prints you can see but I liked how she dispersed these out into this quilt with all of the star uh, um, blocks as well small ones and large ones and sprinkled that out so this is the quilt that I bought this is the pattern that I bought when I bought this um, panel thinking that I would do that with this now that I have this other fabric I could um, you know, put those squares, set those squares inside of this. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I just saw this and it was on clearance and I didn't want to pass that up. I could just use it. I think I got three or four yards. Let me see if I said, I got three yards. So if I do make, use it as a backing, um, it couldn't be a very big quilt for that. Or I could use it as setting fabric for in between these blocks. I don't know. But that was my haul. <laughs> That's what I picked up when I was there. I like this truck too. It's that same aqua. Can you see that? Find joy in the journey. No, find joy in the ordinary. Ooh, I like that even better. So cute, cute, cute. So that was my uh, shopping for my birthday. We went to lunch as well. We got coffee that morning. It was a wonderful time together and I always enjoy that. So that, um, that was my shopping expedition. And then also in the mail this week, I received my January so sampler box. And when I opened this up, I was so excited. I was so excited about this month's box. Some, when you're getting a surprise box, you're never quite sure what's gonna be in it. So some months I'm like, eh, okay, not really me. And other months it's like, oh yes, this is me, the me totally. So let me show you what was in my January box. So the, um, the theme for it is Grow Kindness. And on the back, as I've mentioned before, they have uh, coupon codes. And uh, there's a pretty good one on this here, this month. So I may just have to, um, some pretty good ones. <laughs> yeah, I may just have to um, purchase something so I can get those. All right, so let me show you. Always a fabric included in the box. And the fabric this time, Lori Holt's new calico line. Let me take this out of the out of the package so there's no glare for you. It's her new calico fabrics. Oh, so cute. So cute. Let me do it this way. Flip them. Like cards? No, that does not gonna work. Okay. So in you know, obviously in Lori's colorways, um, aren't this red? Hen, hens, just the cutest. And chicks, those aren't even hens. Chicks, they're just really cute. So I was excited to get this, to see these lines. Now, from what I understand, I even like the orange. Um, from what I understand, my Calico Garden uh, kit should be here tomorrow, Thursday. So I'm looking forward to that. So there's two, two packages of five inch stackers in there. Then it came with a wrist pin cushion, and I have not taken this out yet. I'm gonna do that real quick. Again, it's in uh, Lori's uh, fabrics, and it's got a um, bit of elastic on the back, cute little white button in the middle, but so you can wear this on your wrist. I may not use it on my wrist, I don't know. Don't tend to do that, but it's cute. If anything, I could uh, set it on my, what I might do is I have some um, old canning lids that I use, and I can set that in there um, and glue it into that and so that it sets real nice with a little metal, boost it up just a little bit and a little metal uh, ring on the bottom and have that set on my um, sewing table. It's always good to get new pin cushions every once in a while because mine, you know, after a while you poke it so many times it's starting to get, you know, so many pin pricks and holes in it and um, gets dusty and everything. I have a bit of a cold this week. Let 
So the more I talk here, the more I'm gonna need to take a drink. All right, this is probably my favorite thing in the whole thing. You recognize that? It's a set of readers. I've looked at Lori's readers for a long time and I've never bought one. Like I mentioned when I did my cross stitch video, I keep, keep a set of readers in every cross stitch bag. Now I have um, personal information here. I have contacts, I wear contacts, and I wear one, I wear the monovision, so one's for distance and one's for close up. So when I'm reading, I don't need readers anymore. When I had uh, distance contacts, I would need, I was getting to the point that I needed readers just to be able to read. Several years ago, I switched to where I have the monovision, so, so my eyes have adjusted to that. I don't have any problem with that anymore. I can see far with one up close with the other. So every day I don't wear glasses, don't wear readers. But when I sit down to do cross stitching, I need just a tad bit extra help. And so I do wear readers to cross stitch. These are a 2.50. I just love the color too. I don't know, is it because the older you get, your color changes kinda, kinda change. I love, I mean, when I decorate, it's all muted colors and you know, I wear a lot of black and white and a lot of burgundy and those kind of colors, but I don't know, maybe it's just the, the older part of me wanting to be a little fun. <laughs> so I think these are really cute. What do you think of that? I like them, I like them. I'll find a nice bag to put those in and and work on those. Those kind of match the uh, my Sunday stitch, the um, This Is The Day with those bright pink, that bright pink house. I think they're fun. <laughs> I was very excited to get those. Very excited. All right, so readers and a pin cushion, and then um, there's some foundation paper in here for um, a kite, vintage kite block. I have not done much foundation paper piecing, very little. This is something that I'm gonna work on this year. Actually, I um, have been chosen to be a, a pattern tester for a gal that I had did a pattern I tested a pattern for her last year and she's come out with a new one. She's coming out with a new one and it is um, foundation paper pieced. So I said, I'd be happy to test for you as long as it's a beginner <laughs> because I've not done much foundation paper piecing. So I have that pattern and I'm getting started on that and I'll be sharing some progress on that and then obviously tell you when that pattern is out. But this is also foundation paper. And usually foundation paper, from my understanding, foundation paper works best on blocks that are more difficult to piece. You know, if it's a block that, uh, you know, that can be pieced pretty easy, there's really not a reason to use foundation paper unless, I know like Kimberly on Fat Sh Quarter Shop, she uses this kind of paper, especially the triangles on paper, so that she gets her blocks just perfect, which is fine. You know, everybody's different. Um, so this one is for the kite. So I'll be excited to try that. Actually, the pattern that's included in the box uses that foundation um, paper, and it uses the two charm packs, and then you add uh, some background and borders with the white, and then some red binding to make that quilt right there. I might try it, I don't know. It's not high on my list right now, but I might. And then, as always, the... Um, the block number 10 for the Bliss Quilt Along, and I have not had a chance to do this yet, so I will make that this week and then show you that in next week's video along with my other, my previous nine blocks. We're getting close after this, so we would just have February and March, and we'll have 12 blocks, and then we'll be getting the setting instructions for those. So that's my box. I am excited to work with the Calico, the Calico line for Calico Garden. That so long starts uh, January 30th. That is just next week. So um, getting ready for that one, I'm excited. All right, so I will put a link in the so um, a link in the description if you are interested in getting this so sampler box each month for yourself. It is kind of fun. It's kind of like getting a, a birthday present once a month. That's the way I look at it. I think it's kind of fun to see the new lines and just different things and um, different gadgets that I may not pick up on my own, but uh, a fun thing. So I'll put that in the description if you're interested in getting one of those for yourself. So a couple videos ago, I shared some of my plans for 2023, some of the quilts that I would be working on. One of those that I mentioned was this Thimbleberries pattern. Thimbleberries. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Thimbleberries? Lynette Jensen, that's who I started quilting with. 
um, was Thimbleberries. I loved her books, um, but I meant to say Thimble Blossoms. This is Camille Roskelly, and I have plans in 2023 to make this threadbare spool quilt. I think this is very pretty. So this week I did pick out my fabrics for this. And um, so I had this uh, Civil War stack sitting on my, um, in my sewing room. And I thought that is just my kind of a, a quilt. And being Civil War print, I thought the spools worked well because in, you know, in Civil War time, they would have been using a lot of spools, hand sewing, that kind of thing. And I love the colors of, of uh, reproduction prints. So I'm gonna start with these. This is not quite enough to do all of the blocks that are in the pattern, but I do have some other uh, Civil War prints in my, in my stash that I'll complement, um, add along with these. So I'm using these and then for my spool tops and bottoms, Camille used a blue fabric on hers and I have chosen to go along with um, the Civil War prints, I have chosen a black fabric. Let me see if there's a name. If you're interested in the line, this is Essentials, put out by Wilmington. Let me see if I can get in here close. I'll show you. This has just a tad bit of a print to it there. And I, I like that. I think that'll go well with the Civil War uh, reproductions. So as you might notice, I have, this is probably um, two yards, two or three yards. And all of my larger yardage like that, I put on these comic book um, pieces. These are just comic board, I don't know, they use them for comic books, I don't know. I guess to keep their comic books stiff, I really don't know. But this is a good size. Uh, someone introduced this to me last year. And so I have taken all of my, um, anything that's more, more than half yard, half yard's a little small to fit on here, so a yard, it just depends. Um, I used to have all of my yardage in drawers in my sewing room. But I found that as I would be auditioning fabrics, I would pull this one out and set it out, pull this one and set it out. It was hard to see into those drawers. So sometime last year, early last year, 2023, I pulled all those out. I got a stack of um, these comic book poster board type things, and I put all of my larger yardage on boards. Now these sit, I have um, a, a built-in bookcase right outside of my sewing room. I love it. I'll put in a picture so you can see what that looks like. That's some of my favorite. The old barn doors. We uh, Our upstairs is a converted attic, so it has um, the sloped ceilings. And in that part of the hallway, there was um, open eaves underneath there. So. Um, my sons and my husband one year cut a bookcase into there and then my son finished it with barn wood that we had Those are the shelvings and then we had these old barn doors and they put a barn door on there for me And I just love that so when I walk up the stairs right outside my sewing room I have all of these fabrics just as you saw standing straight up on that in that shelf And it's just a lot easier to say okay I need a black or okay I'm and I can go through and pull out the ones that I want so that's just a fun way to store it I, I think part of the fun of going into a quilt store is just seeing all the fabrics and how they decorate with uh, the old sewing machines or they decorate with uh, the fabric or the pre-cuts and things. And I thought, I can do that. I can do that in my own sewing room. Make it my own pretty. Someday I'll do a sewing room um, tour. The problem, the problem with a long arm machine is it's big and bulky and it's not pretty. I mean, I have probably one of the prettier long arms on the line you know I, I think the handy quilters are made with their white metal casing i just think they're a little prettier than some of the other steel colored models out there but it's a big bulky machine and it fills up half my room and so um while i see many people that have these beautiful sewing rooms um mine is is packed in there <laughs> with my machine. So yes, I do keep a lot of trinkets and a lot of decorations. It's just not the prettiest thing with a long arm. 
but one of these days I'll do that for you. So I film, I actually don't film in my sewing room. I film downstairs and um, it's just a little more room down here to move around. And then I do all my sewing upstairs in my studio. But I enjoy decorating with um, stacks, pre-cuts, yardage, and then having these all outside of my sewing room door. Um, it just brings me joy. So that's, I've got this picked out and I'll begin working on that. This week I did not, I picked out the fabrics for this, but I did not work on it because I was working on one of my other projects for 2023. So I've joined in the Sew Scrappy Spools Quilt Along that Fat Quarter Shop is doing. They are taking this at a slow rate, which I appreciate. And um, I didn't bring the uh, schedule with me today, but so you're making this month in January, it was eight blocks, two uh, or four of one set of blocks and four of another one. And so that's really the plan is each month taking a block or two and making however many you need for the quilt. So you have all month to do it. So it began officially on January 12th. And um, so this week I worked on mine. So here's the pattern and there is a link below for you if you would like to join in on this. And let me show you the fabrics that I've chosen. So I mentioned that outside my sewing room, I have my yardage. Um, anything that's more than a yard, even if it's a tad bit under a yard, if it's big enough that I can fold it around that, that uh, cardboard piece, then I like to put it in there so that I can see it. Inside my sewing room, I have two of these tubs that are for fat quarters. I would say fat quarters, but some of them are a little more than a fat quarter. So this is be the in-between. They're not scraps. You know, they're not cut um, like that. I'll show you those buckets another time. But these are, I don't want to cut these up into scraps yet because I may need different sizes. I may need, you know, a seven inch square or a five inch square or a strip of some kind or different sizes of, of strips. So I leave these as either the fat quarters or they may be even, you know, three quarters of a yard or something like that, half a yard, just not quite. Sometimes these are pieces that um, aren't quite square so they don't fit on the comic board books very well, the comic book boards very well. So I'll put them in these. So I have two of these and this is just your Target or Walmart or Joanne, whatever, okay? And um, I have these inside of a drawer, so I can pick this up and take it out of the drawer. And that's what I did. When I looked at my drawer and said, okay, I'm gonna start these scrappy spools, what fabrics do I want? And I started to pick from my um, scrap bins. I have bins that are one and a half, two, two and a half, three and a half, and five. And I started to go through there and I thought, well, but then each month when I do those blocks, I'm gonna be be picking different fabrics and it may not coordinate so well. So I pulled out this bin and what I've decided is I'm pulling all my fabrics for the year long quilt along from these fabrics. I like, they're mostly muted. There's a few bright ones that I may not, but you know, when they're all mixed in there together, even the bright ones like, you know, there's a kind of a wild one right there. Even the bright ones like that would work. So then the spools um, themselves are, uh, in the pattern she uses one brown. Mine, I'm going to choose one of these browns each month and that's what I'm gonna make those blocks out of. So I'll just keep all of these fabrics, I'll set it off to the side until February because now I'm done with these blocks. Um, and then February, I'll pull these back out again and I'll pick whatever block they're working on, I'll pick the colors that I want and um, and go for that. So, you want to see the blocks? <clears throat> so we had two blocks, two different kinds of blocks to make this month. So one was just a four patch, very simple. There's one. There's another one. And a third one and the fourth one. And like I said, all of these have the same um, brown print on it because I just cut 
what I needed from, and I used up all of this brown print that was in that tub. And so next month when I'm doing a different block, it'll be a different brown. Um, and these are spread throughout the quilt. They're not all together. No, you can't even see in this picture. Okay, there's a four patch there. And nowhere else, even on this picture, do you see another four patch. So they're spread out. So when I actually put the whole quilt together, these the browns will all be very scrappy. The second quilt, the second block that we made was uh, the log cabin, log cabin block. And these are the same prints that I used in these. Most of them. I mean, some of them were ones that I pulled from the the tub. So no placement of light and dark. These are just um, just sewing strips. And so there's four of those as well. So fun. They, those are really, they went very quickly uh, together. So all of my blocks for the So Scrappy uh, Quilt Along are done for January. So now I will put, set this aside. And that's part of the reason that I went ahead and pulled the fabrics for that uh, Threadbare because this project, the spools, the scrappy spools project is done for January and so um, I can start working on something else and then pull a scrappy spools back out in February when it's uh, I mean I could work on them anytime but it's just fun uh, to quilt along with everybody else and then I can start on this one anytime when I'm caught up on those so that's um, my progress on the scrappy spools so that was one of the things i was going to do in 2023 the threadbare was another one so i'm already i mean it's not even into january and i'm getting started on these and uh, the calico garden quilt along will start here at the end of january so we're getting going on those i'm excited one of the things i shared with you last week um, mentioned that um, I am this year in charge of challenge at our uh, quilt guild. So I created this PDF, this 2023 UFO challenge, and this is linked in my description below if you'd like to join along. But each month I've just challenged the guild to finish a different category of um, UFO. And so I spent some time this past week going through and filling out mine. I have it filled out through July. I know what each of the UFOs that I'm going to work on um, through July. The others I haven't, I'm not ready to commit is really why I don't have anything down there. I have some projects that would fit, um, but at this point I'm not sure if I really want to finish those this year, so I haven't filled in that part. But let me show you what I'm, what I am working on, what my plans are for each of the months so that I can finish these UFOs during um, 2023. So the first one, it says, in February, we're supposed to pick our smallest UFO. And I have to preface this by showing, um, do you see that pillow back there? <clears throat> I'll scoot over just a little bit. This is a um, truck pillow put out by Buttermilk Basin. Um, uh, I, I love, <laughs> I love too many things. It takes so much time but it just so much fun this is wool applique and then I made into a pillow and she has a whole series uh, Stacy West has a whole series of truck pillows she has other series as well but this was the truck ones I kind of got a theme going on with those too don't I and um, I made this January pillow probably two years ago and my plan was to make each one through the month through the different months she has one for each month of the year I did the January one and then I was off track I never finished the, I only have um, the February one. I don't even have the others um, in my sewing room. I could always order them. But as my smallest UFO for February, that is what I'm going to finish. Let me pull the pattern out. So when I consider a UFO, I consider it um, something that I have all the fabrics for, at least a majority of the fabrics for, that I've either started or I've got it all in cross stitch what would we we would say kitted up all ready to go and i just haven't done it so that's what i'm considering a ufo anything that i've already started on or i at least have all the fabrics and i just need to start on it so here sorry for the glare this is a little bit of a glossy paper so here is the february truck and what i love is this um well first of all this is a wooden wooden piece that she includes in the package let me show you this one up close the February one is very similar. So 
Um, this is all wool applique, and there are some buttons here, and um, <laughs> it was a couple years ago since I did this. There are some French knots and a little bit of just hand embroidery, not much, not much at all. Most of it is just um, wool applique. I do mine on machine, and I actually use a monofilament thread on the top and then just a regular thread on the bottom, a cotton thread on the bottom. But then each one of them has this wooden quilt square, and I think that's so adorable. This is the January one. And then each one of them has some sort of little garland, and this is um, not attached to the pillow except at the sides right here. These are um, applique, hand applique, just stitched, and then um, folded over and stitched along there. That uh, twine is is run through there and that's just just adorable and I keep this out in my in my living room so then the January that's the January one the February one has the hearts in the back of the truck it has a, a different quilt block that's not the same one nope different one and then it has the little garland and this one says love on it so for February, this is my first UFO in my UFO challenge. I'm going to finish this pillow. It's all kitted up. It came with everything I need. The quilt block, even the, the little um, twine that you use, all the different wools. And um, it even has, I don't think it has the back, the back pillow if you're gonna make it into a pillow. I think I put my own on there. Although there is a piece here and it looks pretty big, so maybe it is. I can't remember. It shows you how long it's been since I did the other one. So in my UFO challenge, for my smallest UFO listed in February, I have Truck Full of Joy. Um, and that's what it's called, Truck Full of Joy Monthly Pillows, and this is the February one from Buttermilk Basin. So that's my February UFO that I've committed to. In March, it says the UFO that you have had the longest, and I am truly embarrassed to show this, <laughs> but it's a UFO and I should finish it. So back in 20, you can't even say 20, 2002, um, there was a quilt store in Indianapolis called Quilts Plus. It's not even in this location anymore. It's now owned by a different owner and it has moved to a different city. But I was a part of a second Saturday sampler. This is probably one of the first things I did as a quilter. I know my mom and I did this together. And so um, you went the first time, and I can't remember, maybe you paid like five bucks for the first visit, and you would get um, a little package that had your materials and your instructions to make the block for the next month. And then if you brought that finished block back on the second Saturday, you brought that finished block back, you got the next packet for free. For nothing as long as you brought this one back you would get the next month's free and there were 12 of them and I have all of the blocks finished these there was different colorways I chose the flannel one and I have all of these blocks finished now to be fair I did I did two so I did one quilt and I finished that one all of these blocks but I, these, the rest of these I had done a second set and I've never never finished them so I'll show you these blocks real fast. I actually have 11 here. I have one that's framed and um, is in my stairwell. Um, but the thing is, I think what I did is I purchased, when the whole thing was done and I made my first quilt, then they had a bunch of these um, little packets made up and they had extras. So I went back and I, and I purchased some of those. So like I have a couple that are the same. So I have two of these blocks and look, that one's even, I need to fix that one. Um, but this is what it looks like. So each block was different. The fabrics coordinated, but they were not uh, the same. They're all uh, flannels, the same background fabric, and then just different flannels or um, almost like shirtings type thing. So I have all 12 of these blocks. So the only thing that I need to do is purchase some sort of um, flannel to use as my sashing strips maybe some cornerstone strips. That one's a cool block, I think. And, um, and put the thing together. So 
My oldest, the challenge is a UFO that you've had the longest. I think 2002 qualifies. What is that, 21 years? That's terrible. That's terrible. This one's a cute one. I like that uh, fall fabric right there with the leaves on it. So for March, that is what I'm going to finish. My The, the UFO that I've had the longest. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing to go through these projects every once in a while because it's just insane to think that it's been that long. All right, so then for April. For April, it says a project that someone else gave you. And if you're like me, once people know that you're a quilter, um, they give you stuff. My mother-in-law is getting rid of this. Do you want it? <laughs> you know, so-and-so passed away, and here's a project. Do you, do you want to finish it? Somewhere along the line, someone gave me a whole set of Sunbonnet Sioux um, applique squares. And they're all finished. I mean, it, they're all on muslin. Um, it looks like they're all zigzag stitched. There's look like a basting stitch down there first, and then it's zigzagged. They're all Sunbonnet Sioux. Let me show you some of these. So this is a project someone else gave me. I did start on it because I've put um, like a two inch sashing around many of the blocks. Isn't that adorable? Look at her little dress. And I've even got tags on it. Like my tag right here says 1D. So this is, you know, obviously row one and it's the fourth block over. And so at some point, I don't, I don't really know how old this is. I like that dress too. I started doing some, well, I can tell you, um, a lot of these fabrics are not, um, um, how do I wanna say? <laughs> They're not quilt store fabrics, is what I'll say. I was using scraps, what I had, or I was using yardage that I had, so, I mean, this one itself may be 15 years old probably not quite as old as my flannel ones, but it's very old. So I have probably, I don't know, eight or 10 of the blocks that I've got the sashing around. Isn't that purple so cute? This just reminds me of some of the dresses I wore when I was a little girl. Red polka dot, and I've done a different, all different sashings around, you know, each one. So I probably have, like I said, eight or 10 of these squares finished. I have enough, I have five rows and four across. These blocks with the um, sashing on it finish out, I think at 19 inches square. So if I calculated right, that would make a quilt that is 76 by 95. So a pretty good size. And then other blocks that I have, um, Sunbonnet Sue is on the muslin, and then I have attached these four sashings that I was gonna put around the edge and uh, I got busy doing something else and never finished it. So that is my plan for April. This is the UFO I'm going to finish for April. And uh, see, I have, I mean, it's pretty well laid out. I could just, um, you know, set this next to my sewing machine and be working on it. Don't you love her dress there? That's so cute. So I don't even think, the person who gave it to me, it wasn't her project. It was somebody had given it to her, I think, and then she passed it on to me. So it's a cute one too. So a lot what looks like to me is um, 60s and 70s prints. She did a good job coordinating the solids of the shoes and the hat with the, the dress itself. Really cute. So this is my UFO that I plan on finishing for April. I'll be excited if I get all these done. It's a challenge. I tell you the good thing, the fun thing about doing these videos every week is it keeps me on track is because I, I you know, I made a promise. I told you guys I was gonna work on this and and um, and I do. When <laughs> There's something about saying it out loud or saying it to other people that you're gonna do it and I get it done. So May, it says um, the challenge is a UFO baby quilt. So I went through my stash to see what I had. I have this baby quilt finished. It really just needs to be long-armed. And so that's what I put down for my maid. This is, um, actually this may be 
from Lori Holt's Scrappiness is Happiness. I didn't do the, um, the quilt from that. I probably did it from her video, but now that the book is out, you could have the instructions in that. So you're picking three different fabrics, um, you know, a dark, a medium, and a light, and then you lay it out in a, in a gingham uh, pattern. And I know in her book now, that she gives all different sizes. So depending on what size of a quilt that you want, you can either, you know, you could do more of these squares so that you make it bigger, or there's also dimensions that you can make bigger squares. Um, so I chose, a, this is a cowboy girl, a cowboy girl, a cowgirl, um, dark, and then I did a red gingham, and then just the light one, the low volume is white with red little squares in there. So that's my May UFO. I have a backing ready. I just pieced this one as well, but when I was laying it out to look at it, I don't think it's quite big enough, so I'm gonna have to add some more. So I did that same cowgirl print, just as an X across the middle and down. Um, but I may have to see if I have more of that and actually do one um, around the outside too, because this isn't quite big enough. And if you've ever, um, if you are a long arm quilter or you take your projects to a long arm quilter, you know that most everyone ask for you to have four inches larger on every side. So you can see this one, I don't have quite that on this side, maybe on that side, and not enough on this side. Okay, so that's why I say this backing is just not big enough. If I, If you were hand piecing it, or hand quilting it, you might have enough. But on a long arm, you have, um, we have three different rollers. So I have, there are two rollers where I pin the backing to, and I brought along, I don't actually pin my backings. I use what's called a red snapper. And I brought some of this along so that you could see kind of how this works. So this big, long red tube um, runs in a pocket that I've put at the very edge of my leaders. So those not familiar with a long arm quilter, if you can picture the old um, quilting frames back in um, olden times that the ladies would all sit around and they would have the quilt um, rolled on the on these big long rollers, you know, they might have been 8, 10, 12 foot long, and the quilt was rolled on that and then they would have just a small section that they could, they would be sewing on at a time. A long arm quilter is the exact uh, quilting machine is the exact same concept, except, you know, we have the the quilt top and the backing, all three layers right there, but it's an actual machine with a very long throat space that is actually stitching out those designs. So you can't attach a quilt directly to those bars. You have some cloth leaders. They're usually, I don't know, maybe three feet in depth. Um, they are Velcroed onto the bar, and then that, then the quilt backing is attached to that quilt leader. And I have pockets stitched into the edge of my quilt leader. And this is just a red tube that runs down through the edge of that quilt leader. And then, so if you can picture, you know, this would be covered up with the, um, with the cloth leader that's on the long arm. Then I would lay my backing fabric across there. And then I have the red snappers. These have a trough down through the middle and they snap right onto this red, um, the red tubing. So when you snap that on, obviously I missed part of that, but when I snap it on, then it's tight and it holds that. And then I can wrap, you know, I can roll that onto the bar. And that's how I do my backing. So I'll have one at the very farthest away from me, the top of the backing, um, the backing faces the floor, the, the right side of it will face the floor. And then I have a bar closest to me and the end of the backing would um, sit in that bar or on that bar. And then you lay out the quilt top and that is then on a separate bar. Now, I use the red snappers for my backing material. I do not use the red snappers for my quilt top. I actually pin my quilt top to the cloth leader. I think it gives me a little more precision um, I can get a little closer. It's a little easier to do. I, ju I just find that that works really well. And then I roll that onto that bar. So I have my backing fabric. Then I'll have my batting on top of that. And then I'll pull, roll out just enough of the quilt top 
to be at the edge, I'll do a plumb line with my machine, and then I know that that's where my, um, the top of my quilt will start, and then that's how I do it. But because you're attaching those backing fabrics to these leaders, we need extra fabric to be able to attach those leaders. The red snappers will take a good inch of fabric themselves, then I can't sew right up next to that. Um, I don't want my, you know, my needle to hit this or anything, so I need another inch there. And then, so that would be at least two inches on either side. And then the other couple of inches is just to make sure there is no, very few quilts are actually perfectly square. So that just gives me some leeway if the quilt kind of tilts one way or the other, if the backing fabric is not completely square, that gives me, because I have seen um, one and eight, 108 inch backing fabric brought to me that was like this. <laughs> it was not square. And so if I have extra fabric, you know, I can uh, square up that piece, but that's gonna shrink it in some and it just gives me some more to work with. So that's why I say this backing fabric is not big enough, even though it is just a tad bit larger than the quilt backing, than the quilt top. If I wanna put this on the long arm, I need a bigger backing on that. And one another thing that you can do, and I've had clients do this, is you might have your backing material and it may be, you know, an inch or two, but it's not quite the four inches. You can add some extra fabric, just of some other kind, onto your backing fabric, just to give me some more extra to attach to the leaders. And I hope that made sense. If not, uh, let me know and I'll go over that again next week. Um, but that's why your long arm quilter needs that extra material uh, from your backing. My June UFO, uh, it says a UFO with the fewest number of different fabrics. So my thought in that one was like, maybe it just has two, two or three different fabrics, you know, like the three yard quilts or something like that. I did not have any in my um, UFO stack that was just a couple of different fabrics, but I had this one quilt along that I was working on that was only three colors of fabric. So that's what um, I chose. So this was the Ose Can You Sew quilt along that uh, Lisa Bonjean of Primitive Gatherings was doing last summer. And I have probably half of this quilt finished. And I chose this one just because it's three colors. It's all red, white, and blue. So I have all of the first blocks done. Those are all done. This is, I'm just doing it scrappy, but obviously the quilt could have been done in just one red print, one blue print, one white print. I have all of those blocks done. That was steps one, two, and three. Step four was to make um, all of these, oops, a nine patch. And then, and I have all of those done. Step five was to make these um, half square triangle nine patch. <laughs> and that's the, the one I'm working on because we need 128 of these. And I probably have 50 or so done. So I may be halfway there on these. I'm doing them all scrappy. So these are one and a half inch one and a half inch, one inch finished, one and a half inch unfinished. So by the time, like that one right there is just a one inch square. So these are taking some time. And um, so that is the project that I'm gonna choose for uh, the June. So then what you do is then those blocks go together like this. Then you do some sashings, um, sashings and then the whole quilt looks like this so this one isn't going to be one that i can start in may and have finished in june it's going to be one that i need to start working on a uh, little by little um, with the goal of having it done by june um, but that's my goal i'd like to get that finished and i also put that in june because that's obviously a patriotic quilt because then uh, it would be ready for July. I, I usually put out patriotic decorations all the way from Memorial Day all the way through Labor Day. So if I can get that done, at least by June, at least by my June uh, quilt guild, then I would be happy with that. And let me just share one more. So the July one says a UFO with the brightest fabrics. And so when I went through my UFO challenge, or my UFO stack, um, found a quilt that I've been working on for a while, but I haven't done. So I keep it 
in, I like this um, enamel pan. This is most likely a bread tin, you know, that they would have kept bread in. Um, I like this one because it came with a lid. But you can see my little tag on the outside says Quilty Fun. So this is one of Lori Holt's patterns from her book, Quilty Fun. And I was there for a while. I would do one row of these on a Friday night. And then, I don't know, life happens and I didn't get back to it. So let me show you how much I have done so far. Um, so inside, I just have a plastic container. This is actually a spinach container. Um, with some of my smaller pieces, I have another whole um, wire basket upstairs that's holding all the fabrics that I'm using for this. But so I haven't looked at these in a very long time. So here's one, and these are all Lori Holt prints. I don't remember which line it's from. I think I just picked a bunch of different ones I liked. Actually, that one is not a Lori Holt print. I think that one is a Cora Yoga print but kind of the same colorway. So that one, that row, um, is this one right here. Then I also have the apple row with um, the flying geese unit above it. This one's really cute. All the apples, some of them look eaten, some of them are green, even a yellow one. Those are really cute. Now these were uh, two separate weeks um, that the flying geese units were made on a separate one. Actually, that's a Cora Yoda print too. That's not even a Lori Holt one. And that one too. So I kind of combined different ones. And I went ahead and joined these two rows together because, <coughs> excuse me, um, because they are I don't know, right here towards the top of the quilt. And then I think I have, oh, I have butterflies done. Butterflies and then just a patchwork above that one. Again, that was two separate weeks. Actually, on the looking at the pattern, it goes like this. The patchwork is underneath it. So just cute little butterflies. Yeah, and so that one is um, down here at the bottom with the patchwork underneath it. So I still have um, the mitts to do and I don't know, what would you call those? Are those little, I don't know, leaves, baskets. I have the cups, the spools will be a fun one. And look, and there's houses. I always love houses. And there's some uh, triangle stars, the flowers at the top. So I would like to finish that. So looking at my, the challenge was um, the UFO with the brightest fabrics, and this is uh, definitely counts for that. These are probably the brightest ones I have. So if I, you know, that's two big quilts back to back, one month after the next. So I will have to um, probably put this on my schedule each month if I'm going to get that done. But that would be a fun one to do. And I chose the challenge of the brightest prints again just because it was summertime, it was July. Be a good time to work with those kind of fabrics and uh, be cheery and summery. So that's my plan for that one. So I have UFOs scheduled for February, March, April, May, June, and July. February, March, April, May, June, and July. So I have six of them done. Um, like I said, I'll see how well I do on those before I actually choose ones for the other ones. So the other ones, some of them are a little smaller, a wall hanging, a table topper, a UFO that's not a quilt. So that could be like maybe a bag. I don't think I have any bags unless I did like a quilted um, project bag for my cross stitch or something like that. And then the largest UFO, I have a very large Christmas applique um, quilt. It was a whole um, kitted whole kit that was given to me by my aunt and I haven't worked on that one yet but I might be able to do that one for the largest one in November that would be a good time to have it done for December so like I said if you would uh, like to join in this challenge um, this free PDF is a just is um, available in the description below just a good way to get started and uh, to finish some of those projects that we all have sitting around the house right all right, final thing for today is let's go through some customer quilts that I have finished. I have them hanging up here on the wall. 
So let's start with this flannel one. We'll try to get some pictures. Hopefully once this uh, snowstorm has gone through, then we'll get a little bit of a bright, brighter day than we've had lately. <laughs> and I can get some good pictures uh, to insert. But this is just um, some flannels, all different kinds. The client put together, I think she was trying to use up some flannels that she had, so this will be a fun um, project to have, a quilt to have out for the for the winter time. And let me get in close and show you the, the stitch design. So this pantograph is called Sashiko. Sashiko? Yeah. Sashiko. And I, I like this one just, um, why did I pick this one? So I think it adds just a touch of roundness to a lot of the square, straight line stuff. Um, to me, the prints in this flannel looked a little more manly, so I think this is a good pantograph for any uh, masculine type quilts that you do. I think it, um, not being flowery, but not being circular, it just adds a little bit of more dimension to uh, some straight lines without being uh, too girly. And I chose a dark gray. This is actually Omni Thread Dark Gray 3025. And that's the thread that I used. And I did use a dark gray on the um, backing as well. So even though, you know, there's a lighter color, the dark gray looks nice on that. And see, even from a distance, you really don't see that at all. And I like it on the orange. Sorry about that. I like it on the orange. Oh, very nice. I like that. So Sashiko is that pantograph. If you're a long arm quilter and you're looking for that pantograph, I think I got all of the ones I'm going to show you today from Urban Elements. Um, really nice one there. So my second one is this blue and gold print back here. Hold this both directions. All right, all the quilts that I'm showing today are from Loretta. And I'll be getting these back to her and she'll be doing her own binding. She did tell me about this quilt, that this was a challenge to put together. I was asking her about the quilt construction. I don't know the name of the pattern, um, but I was asking her about the quilt construction on how she put this together. And she said, you're actually cutting these triangles and then sewing um, on the bias, which is difficult to keep it from um, not stretching there. So this may be one of those, I mean, I'm looking at it going, hmm, I wonder if can't we, you know, layer the two fabrics together a little bigger than we need them and do can you do that i know we do it with half square triangles can you do it where you sew down either side and then open them um cut it apart would it create that rectangle right there maybe something i have to try i don't know so notice this fabric right here it has the hexagons with the gold around it and then she's pulled um, the gold fabric from that and some different color blues to match, you know, this is the um, focal print, I always say, and then she's used the, the darker blue, a little lighter blue, and the gold to match from that. So when we were looking at this quilt and we were talking about um, pantographs to use, I said, uh, hey, Loretta, <laughs> I see this little hexy shape right here. What do you think about repeating that in the pantograph? And she was excited about that. So this pantograph is called Diagonal 
plaid hexes. So I do a diagonal plaid bias cut is what I think it's called. I do that quite often and it's four, uh, four sided where this is the same type but it's done in the hexi. And we actually did a light blue thread. So last week when I was showing you all the different color threads that I'd just gotten in and one of them that I mentioned was this little boy blue. And lo and behold, <laughs> I had a quilt that I'm like that would work perfect for it. We auditioned some darker blue, we auditioned a gold color. Um, the reason I kind of suggested to Loretta that we do the light blue was because of the backing fabric. The backing was a very deep blue and black print. I would have, I liked the gold when we auditioned it for the front. I had a gold color thread. I think would have really looked nice on the front, but I did not want to do a gold on the back. I thought that was gonna be way too much to actually match the bobbin and the, and the top thread. So I didn't wanna do gold on the back. I could have done a light gray or maybe a medium gray to kind of match the tone of the gold. But I told Loretta, I cannot guarantee that we wouldn't get some poke throughs, either the gold on this side or the gray on this side. And so we just decided not to take that chance. Instead, I used a light gray um, bobbin thread along with the blue top thread. They're the same um, tone. And so I'm getting close here. If I had told you that that was a light blue, you would have believed me because <laughs> it looks so very similar um, to the front. And because they're the very, very close in tone, um, you don't notice any pin pricks if my, uh, if my uh, tension was off in any area at all. So I think that one turned out really well. Let me hold up the back. So if you are close to the backing, you can see the print. If you're far away, you don't see it at all. It's not until you get in close can you actually see the, the hex seal on the back. Where I think if I'd have done gold, it would have just, it would have just stood out too much. So even though I was excited I might be able to use that on the front, it just didn't, it didn't work for the back. But that's why we audition different colors. And that's why it's hard sometimes if you're sending a quilt to me or you know somebody will say I just don't know until it's a lot easier when I have the quilt top than to actually lay the different colors out and kind of look at it that way so if you're sending a quilt to me don't worry about you know just um, ask for some suggestions and then I can send you pictures with the different uh, threads laid out across that to kind of get your idea of what you like kind of it depends on your style as well um, and how much you like color or don't like color, how much you want your quilting to stand out or not stand out. Um, it's really personal preference and I'm willing to work with you. I'll give you some what I thinks, but uh, it's, it's your quilt. So we can work together to make it. And it also depends on who it's for sometimes too. You know, um, um, if this was going to a man, you might work on, use more blues. I think they might like that a little better than the gold. Um, if you're giving it to somebody who you know is a bling person, you know, <laughs> would like the gold, then that might have been a better choice. I don't know. So we can work together to figure that out. The third quilt that Loretta gave to me is a panel. This one's really cute. Let's stand up with this one. So this is a simple panel that Loretta just added. Um, looks like maybe one and a half, two, not quite two, one and a half inch, two, not two and a half. Um, sashing around it, a border around it, just in black. So she gave me my option. Uh, she said, you can choose whatever pantograph you want. So I thought about it for a while. I thought, well, 
I could do like uh, uh, Karen Chevron's is one that I considered. Going straight with little, you know, uh, triangle. Not really triangles, but uh, points to it. I considered that for a while. But I just decided, I wonder if there's any pantographs out there that are pine cones and pine needles because that is mostly what this is. If I do other straight lines, I could have just done a, a zigzag line. I could have done, there's another pantograph called Good Vibrations where it's just a wave print. Um, could have done something like that, but I decided to look and see if I could find a pine, um, pine cone, pine needle pantograph. And that's what I found. This is called Maureen's Pine Boughs. So you can see, I should have printed this out because it does blend in really well with this quilt. You can see right here and right here, those are pine cones. And then here is more of the pine branches. I like that. Another pine cone up here. I think there was a total of three pine cones. And then, um, oh, so yeah, I mean, it's there. You can see it on the black a little bit better. But then once you get into the print of the panel, it's very hard to see. I went with a light gray thread. And it does blend in very well. I went with the light gray because I didn't want to do too dark and then cover over their eyes. Um, so you get in close, you can see the light gray. But I thought if I did a dark gray, it might um, be too dark over there, over the owl's features, especially on that one. So again, this is called Maureen's, um, Maureen's Pine Boughs, and I did get this one from Urban Elements as well. Now I did have the thought of starting out with a light gray at the top, maybe through the baby bird's faces. Well, I think originally I thought a light gray on the top and then I thought about switching just a tad bit darker to the darker gray on the bottom because there was a lot darker on the bottom. There is one quilt that I've done that with well, first of all, I saw that technique done on a uh, quilt that was in a quilt show, and it was actually a, wa a water theme, almost like uh, the whole thing was underwater, but they had done different um, tones of blue. So it started out with a lighter blue like this at the top, and then a little. Then they did two or three uh, passes with the long arm, and then uh, a couple more that were a little darker blue, and then as you move down the quilt, and then the very bottom was a very you know, a dark, dark blue at the very bottom. And I really liked, it was, it was just a neat effect. So I've done that on one quilt that was actually evergreens, um, trees, and you can go back on my Instagram account. I know I didn't get a great picture of it, but I actually did that down the quilt. I'd asked the, the quilter if she would mind if we tried it because I just thought it might be a good effect. So I started with a lighter green fabric, lighter green thread at the top. I did a few rows, just did a tad step darker, did a few rows, just a tad step darker and a little. So I think I did five different greens in from top to bottom. And it was, an, it was a neat effect. I really like that. So that might be something you try if you're a long arm quilter. I thought about doing that, just two colors on this one. And then I went against it the farther I got down the quilt. Like, no, I just kept with the light gray. So this is the light gray that I used. <clears throat> Again, it's an Omni thread. And this is uh, actually medium gray. I called it light just because it's lighter than this one. <laughs> This is the medium and it's number 3024. So this is the dark 3025, medium 3024, and then there's a lighter one 3023. So even on this quilt, it looks um, a little lighter on this quilt. It's actually the medium gray that I used. And then as for backing, uh, just a busy print so you really don't even see that on the back. And there we go. So Loretta will be getting these three quilts back and then she's got some binding to work on, doesn't she? And uh, a lot of fun 
a lot of fun. It's so fun to see all the different quilts that different people work on and bring to me, and I get to do, I get to enjoy all of them. Everybody's different designs. All right. So that's my customer finishes for this week and uh, the projects that I'm working on. If you are interested in long arm quilting and um, are needing to find somebody, that you can um, visit my website at TammyErnestQuilting.com and on there there's a button you can push that says long arm prep instructions and order form and uh, when you download that sheet it gives you all the information that you need to get your quilt to me. I do take in mail-in quilts as well as local clients and all that information is on that sheet and I'd be happy to work on a quilt for you. And um, So I hope you're doing well in whatever part of the country or around the world that you are. I appreciate so much the kind comments that everybody's been leaving and uh, so enjoy reading them and seeing uh, the projects that you're working on too. So next week I'll be back and sharing some more of um, progress on the quilts that I have. I have some other customer quilts in the works and I'll be sharing those as well. So leave me a message in the, um, below in the comments and let me know what you're working on and we will see you next week.